and in all thy getting get understanding. That's 4 and 6 of Proverbs. 5 and 20 of uh, Isaiah said, Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Jesus said, Luke, Matthew 22, 29, You do ear, not knowing the scripture nor the power of God. So I think it's, it's important for us to understand the Word of God and get some knowledge. Thank God for that that you feel. I enjoyed that that happened around here Sunday, that powerful move of the Holy Ghost, and, and I love that. I appreciate that. I was, I was birthed in that. That's not new to me. And uh, I love it. Amen. And But... I found out, you know, that feeling wears out. It'll, it'll, thank the Lord. Don't seem like the feeling lasts as long as it one time did. Man, you have a good service on Sunday night, and you'd be high-stepping nearly Friday. But it don't last as long. Maybe that's just me, praise God. But, uh, but you get this in you. And then when you do not feel it, you'll know what to do. Years ago, I know I've told this, you'll be turning to Proverbs 4 and 23. And uh, uh, years ago, I know I've told this story, but, but when you get old, you can just tell them again. Amen. Uh, I, I went to church, and this, uh, this lady, uh, or I was standing in front of the church, and this lady come up. And I said, well, how are you doing, sister? She said, I don't feel saved. I said, well, you don't? She said, no, I don't. I said, well, can you keep a secret, which I know she couldn't. So I made her lie right there on the church step, praise God. I said, I don't feel saved either. She said, you don't? I said, no, I don't. So we got a $600 fuel bill in. And that knocked all my feelings saved out of me. I said, but you know what? I am saved. Because I've done what this Bible said to do, whether I feel saved or not. You may not feel saved every day. Well, praise God. And that don't mean you ain't saved. Now, I'm not against you. Now, if you, if you talk in tongues every day, that's good. If it's real. If you're just ramming around the house saying something you don't know what you're saying and call that talking in tongues, you just made me crazy. Amen. I... I I seen no woman years ago in Miami. She's standing on the street corner. She had that salt shaker in her hand. She's talking in tongues. I throw it on my brakes. She went out there and said, well, what are you doing? She said, I'm, she had this big long thing. She's talking in tongues. So I just got in my car, went on. And, uh, but she was excited and feeling good. She was nuts. But she is that, so praise God. So, you know, uh, it's probably my fault. I'm not blaming nobody. I'm not blaming God. I'm not blaming you, but I, 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 I don't talk in tongues every day. I know that kind of goes against the grain of folks think you got to talk in tongues every day to be saved. And uh, uh, thirty-one thousand one hundred seventy-three verses in here, and I never read that verse. It may be there. And I've overlooked it, but I never, I'm never, I, Paul said, I would that y'all speak in tongues. And I believe it's good. I'm glad I do it. Amen. I just don't do it every day. Probably ain't nobody's fault but mine. But I tell you what, when you ain't talking in tongues and you ain't running the aisle and you're not having a vision and you're not shaking in the spirit, this book will keep you. There have been times, Brother Walker, I didn't feel nothing. But there's something in that book. So, uh, 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 no, 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 no. Thank God for the Word of God. One verse, 4 and 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it, the heart, are the issues of life. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Will you pray with me?
Eternal God, we're so thankful for your goodness and your kindness and your love and your mercy. Ask you to help us, oh God. Touch and move and work even in this service tonight. Anoint me, God. Anoint my lips and my heart and my mind. Anoint their ears to hear. Help us to hear what you've got to say. Dear God, in Jesus' name, speak to us, Lord. Amen. We love you, Father. You can probably get over here, Brother Andy. Probably, these boys probably make more room for you. Amen. Uh, well, we're in a battle. You sang an old song. I don't know if y'all sung it up here much, but they sang, Run if you want to. Run if you will. But I came here to stay. It's a battlefield, brother. Not a recreation room. It's a fight and not a game. Run if you want to. I come here to say. But I want to talk tonight about our battle. Our battle. And uh, I want to talk how our battle is on two fronts. It's not a one front battle. It's a two front battle that we're dealing with. And uh, we got to deal with that that's in us. If the devil took a vacation... Most of y'all wouldn't would never know it. I mean, if he 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 could take the night off and you you wouldn't realize it, because you got a you got a lot of stuff working in you. And and without without him, but but you can't overlook that he is there. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. This battle is a two-fronted battle. It's not just one. You know, in World War II, you had the, 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 the battle of the, in the Pacific. We was warring there with the Japanese. We was warring in uh, uh, North Africa. Most of that was the uh, Italians and Germans, but mostly Italians under, under the Germans. In Europe, which was under... Germany, so it wasn't the one, it wasn't the one front battle, and there was three fronts going on all at the same time, and uh, and you got a real enemy, he's real, he's real. Matter of fact, you got two enemies. You got one that you can't see; he's invisible, and then you got one you can see. You comb its hair every morning. Washington's face. If Brother Andy help me, give me a little help here. Matthew 12, 34 and 35. Brother Dallas, Mark 7, 21 through 23. Brother Adam, Jeremiah 17 and 9. Brother uh, uh, Cotton, uh, Ecclesiastic. Did I, did I already give you one? Ecclesiastes 9 and 3. I want to talk about your heart. Your heart. And not your blood pumper. Not your blood pumper. But your heart, which is the seed of your affections. Your heart's what you think with. It's more than your mind. It's more than your mind. But it's that seed of your affections. You know, we have five senses in our natural body. We have uh, seeing that I'm not doing too well at tonight, hearing, uh, smell, taste, and feel, right? See, hear, smell, taste, and feel. You get five of them. Everything that you contact out here, you contact either with seeing, hearing, smelling, feeling, or tasting. That's, that's the five senses. Then you're inner man there's five senses of that let me see if i can if i can get all them i didn't have this wrote down but if you got got memory and you've got will uh you've got conscience um well i should have wrote them i wasn't planning on going there but you got five of them too praise the lord and uh so so that's that that that's what you connect with in your the Bible said he had an ear let him hear what the spirit said to the churches 
That's not talking about this half a ham. Although you got to have that half a ham to hear. But there, there's that hearing that's beyond this, what you hear with your, with your eardrum and all that. And that's why we're saved, but we're not saved by what we see. We're saved by what we hear. That's why I've never. I, that's why I never was impressed, or felt like television advertisement would really do anything for the gospel. Because in that, watching television or looking at a movie, you're passive. You don't really have to be. You can really have all of your mind almost in neutral, and you're just looking. It's doing all of it for you. But to hear, you're active. You really got to be listening. Have you ever talked to somebody you could tell they wasn't hearing a word you said? Sometimes I'm doing that when I'm preaching, looking at you, praise God. <laughs> Amen. I'm wanting to say, hey, hey. Amen. And uh, uh, that, but that's why it said, what is it, eight times in the book of Revelation, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. So you can be here and hear the audio but it's not, it never gets down into where the where the where the soul is. So, so you've got this heart, this inner you, this this uh, that seed of your affections, that that you choose with, where you choose to live for God or you choose not to live for God. You know, you've got that choice, and 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 it's influenced by. All this other that's around you. And Solomon said, keep thy heart with all diligence. That means carefulness. I watch how uh, some folks watch their kids. Uh, it's a miracle that they're alive. Because they're not very diligent. Then there's some folks, it's a, it's a miracle that the kids are alive because they're so careful. I passed a lady one time. And tried to, and uh, 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 she was afraid constantly of, of uh, her kid was going to get hurt. No, they can't go. They let them get hurt. They can't. No, they get hurt. And I'm going to tell you what: her kids had more broke arms and broke legs in the hospital more than anybody in the church is there. And, and 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 she was the most careful woman that we had. So she thought. But I think she hexed them. Praise the Lord! If you can do it, if you can do it, she did it. Praise the Lord. But keep your heart with all carefulness. Because out of it are issues. That's why we got to watch what we listen to and what we look at and all that stuff. Not going to be talking a lot about that tonight. Because, the, 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 you know, Sodom and Gomorrah didn't have a television. They had, didn't have internet. And God had to destroy them because they were so evil. The Antiluvian world before Noah's day. They didn't have medium of no kind. But you don't need, I'm going to tell you what, that's why you don't need that stuff, because you don't need that. you got enough junk in you Amen. without you feeding that. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. And it's more than this. It's more than these eyes. There's one of those crazy snake handlers up there in, uh, I forget where it's in Kentucky or West Virginia, that, uh, uh, he had, he had been lusting after his girlfriend. And he read that scripture, if the eye offend you, pluck it out. Well, the idiot did. Now, he's laying up there in the hospital. He's got them galls in his eyes all laid up there. And his girlfriend come to see him, and he tried to rape her. While she was in there, it didn't help. Because he already had it in here. Well, praise God. So this is what you gotta, you gotta keep this. You got you 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 gotta be careful. Ain't no use in picking the apples off the tree if the root is down there 15 feet below the ground. You gotta do something to the root. All right, where are you at, Brother Andy? Matthew 12, 34. Matthew 12 and verse 34. Yes. 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 Your mouth will tell on you. 
You get folks mad and their mouth will tell on them. Amen. I, I had, a, I had a, a, a cousin. He's a General Baptist preacher. And uh, we was working with Brother McNeely and, and uh, uh, he, hit his, he hit his finger with a hammer. And that General Baptist preacher, uh, what he said wasn't in the book of Luke. And I just kind of looked at him, you know. He said, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. I said, well, if it hadn't been in there, it wouldn't come out. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. A <laughs> couple of days later, I smashed my hand. And he was waiting, but it didn't come out. Because it wasn't, it wasn't in there. <laughs> well, glory to God. Glory. Abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Go ahead. A good mouth out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. Yes. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Now, I'll talk to you about your heart. About your heart. Your heart. Because we got... We, we're fighting a battle on two fronts, and I'm going to cover both of them. And one of them is this guy that you're living with. You know, Paul said, when I would do good, evil is present with me. Oh, I got a message I want you to hear. Uh, uh, Brother Alviar preached up at, uh, up at that camp, me and him done it, at uh, uh, Kentucky. And he kind of turned that scripture around. He said, when I would do evil, good is present with me. You talk about a message. And I'm going to give it to Brother Tory, if I remember, and let you folks hear that. But uh, it's there. How many can remember when you was a sinner? Anybody can remember back that far? Well, when you was a sinner, you didn't have to get up every morning and said, well, now old Matt's a sinner. Now what can I do today to sin to prove that I'm a sinner? He didn't have to think about it. He just got up and done what was natural. If he stumped his toe, he said something ugly. Praise God. Amen. And, and probably a lot more stuff. But, but uh, that's because it, it resides in here. Where are you at, Brother Dallas? Mark chapter 7. For from within, out of the... Everybody say, where's that coming from? Where's it coming from? Within where? Where from? Out of the heart. Out of the heart. Praise God. I can write you 14,000 rules, and if you don't get something in your heart, That was standards. Well, standards don't save anybody. But I tell you what standards are. Standards are spiritual barometers. People that have problem with outward standards. They got problems here. Amen. It's not just an outward standard they got problem with. They got problem with submitting to God here. Well, praise the Lord. You on the edge all the time. All that. It ain't, it ain't because you want your hair longer, men, or your hair shorter, women, or whatever. You, you've, got a, you've got a spiritual problem. You've got a heart problem. Right. Old doctor goes in there, and he puts that stethoscope up, and it ain't doing just right. Next thing you know, he's got you on a stress test. And a lot of times folks get on stress tests, have a heart attack while they're on it because their heart's so bad. Other times, they're not sure, so they got this uh, 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 angiogram. And they run that dye up in you, and they're looking at your heart, seeing if you got any blockages in there. And you can lay there and look at it. You can, I, I know I've had them. You can lay there and look at it. You can, you can watch that dye going through all that, you know. See? All that. That's what we're doing tonight. We got you on God's spiritual angiogram. And you're running up through there and, and, and looking at all them errors in your heart. And he said, for, for within, out of the heart of men proceeds what? 
Now, now, now we're going to get on this other front in a, in a little bit. But you can have an evil thought without the devil. <laughs> that evil thought can originate in you. Adulteries. Now, I believe folks can practice. I believe folks can practice sins. I believe folks can practice sins until it opens themselves up and they invite evil spirits. And an evil spirit can attach themselves to that weakness that you have. But I'm going to tell you what. This adultery and fornication, it comes right out of here. Every man in this house is capable of committing adultery. Every one of them. Every woman in this house. You're capable of committing adultery. It resides in your body. Praise God. You have to keep that down. You've got to say, uh-uh. My mind ain't going there. My eyes are not going there. I'm not entertaining that. Said the horse leech has two daughters. I'm from Kentucky, and uh, we do horse country wasn't in our part of Kentucky. It was on over in in Middle Kentucky. But I've been up around them horse farms there. Boy, talk about some beautiful horses. We got people in here who love animals. But beautiful, beautiful. You can take a big horse. What they wind up weighing almost a ton, huh? And you can take a little old horse leech. It's no bigger than that. And it can get buried behind that horse's ear or somewhere in his body. Next thing you know, that, that horse will lose its stamina. And if you don't find the leech and get rid of it, you'll have a dead horse after a while. That little old leech that big will suck the blood out of that 2,000-pound horse. Because it don't give up. It starts sucking. It just keeps sucking. It just And there's some things that can latch a hold of you. Things that can latch a hold of you, and it'll suck everything out of you. That's why back in the 50s, them Pentecostal preachers, back when television was so tame, and there really wasn't that much to it, the Holy Ghost moved on them, and they preached against it. Because it felt it would steal your time, and... Fill your mind full of stuff. And, but they were visionaries. They had no idea the cesspool that it would become. Well, praise the Lord. I ain't got confidence in no, You hear me. You can tell this to the world. If somebody tells you they got the Holy Ghost and they got a television in their house, I don't believe a word of it. Well, I got one. Well, you're a big old low-down, sorry hypocrite what you are. When you get to hell, hell will be good enough for you. I'm going to ask the Lord, he'll let me get a bucket of coal and throw it in on you. Praise the Lord. No, I'm not. Praise God. I don't guess. Amen. I mean, why would you put that cesspool in your house? Somebody said, well, we got these phones. Well, we sure do. So let's good. Let's compound the deal. Well, this foot is kind of looking bad, so I'll just take me a knife and chop the other foot off. How, how stupid can you be? But the same thing that governs you about the television needs to govern you about the phone. Right. You can't call anybody on your, te- on your television. Right. You can't get educated on your television outside of stuff you don't need to be educated with. But you can call and get a job or get a hold of the doctor on your telephone. Well, glory to God. But there ought to be something in there that says, hey, you know, I don't need to. Hey, boys, listen to me. Well, listen to me, boys. All y'all are young men. All y'all are young men. And all of y'all are tempted. Everlasting one of you, even old Brady here. Praise God. Y'all, y'all, you're all healthy. You're all warm blood. And, and you'll have enough temptation Without that. No, you, you'll be spending time praying here and at home with temptation you're going to have without entertaining that. But if you open that door, it'll latch your hole there. And it'll go sucking that life out of you. Young married couples, 
You can't be, that's the most stupidest thing you can be is mess with that stuff. I don't want to get sidetracked here because I got somewhere to go. For without of the heart, adult, so you don't need to feed that. You're going to fight that anyhow. You got, you, got, you got that to fight anyhow. Don't you look so sanctimonious at me. You, you got that to fight anyhow. So you don't need to feed that. You need to starve that. Keep thy heart with all diligence. That's why we hate diets. Old Brother Hall, Ron Hall, he's a big old guy. He said, I like dieting so well, I'm on four of them. It takes four of them before I get enough to eat, praise God. But diets ain't fun. Don't be telling me about any diet you're on, and it's fun. You're just like them folks that, that, are, that does all this jogging and walking down the road. I ain't never seen one of them grinning. You go down here to any gym, and you see if you see anybody grinning in there. They're grunting and carrying on because they're punishing their flesh. Your flesh automatically, I got one of them stupid treadmills in my house. My wife bought it for me. It's nearly new. I mean, I could sell it for brand new. Somebody said, seen a picture of this woman. She was laying on this treadmill. Said her doctor told her she needed to be on there an hour. So she laid down there an hour and took a nap. Praise God. You know, because it ain't, it's fun to eat fried chicken. Pie and cake is fun to eat. It don't take no strain for that. I mean, we're ready to go. Some of you's ready now, praise God. But you ain't going. But, so you have to strain. It's like you, it's like, it ain't fun. All this part of living for God is not hallelujah, glory to God, and I just feel so great. Some of it requ requires some strain. I'm not giving in to that. Murders. Did you ever feel like knocking somebody right in the next week? I may have done it if you weren't afraid of going to jail. Well, boy, I'm pastoring a bunch of wonderful people. What else, Brother Dallas? Yes. 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 That's all in us. Every one of them's in you. You got a no evil eye. I mean, you know, you're some folks are kind of like the old guy, old man and woman went down and watched the parade. Their boy was in the got in the service and he's having to march. And this mar when they're marching, they went by mom and dad and said, "Well, looky there, honey." Said everybody's out of step but Johnny. Because you get that evil eye, you can see, you can see Brother Jimmy's fault. You know. Well, praise God. Amen. Man, you got to watch it, these folks that say, "When well, I'm gonna tell you what, brother, if you ever see anything in me, I want you to tell me." Now that's a lie. That, that's I'm telling, I'm telling you right now. It is a lie. Well, praise God. I, I let that go right in this here and out that because first time I tell you, and you ain't going to be very happy about it. Now, you may pray about it and get over it and say, yeah, but you don't, they, you know, hey, well, hallelujah. Man, I ain't never, that's why I never understood folks that want to take a bunch of that medicine junk to get strung out. I hate it. I hate that. I hate putting that junk in my mouth. It alters your feelings. Praise the Lord. Sometimes I have to take some. I take a little NyQuil every once in a while. Uh, got this bad cold and everything. I ain't going to drive. They'll have your pastor rested for DWI. Amen. I mean, they ain't going to believe that I took some NyQuil for cold. They say, well, we've heard that before. Praise God. Well, hallelujah. I, buy, I don't want to, you know... Uh, All this stuff is in me, and I have to restrain that. Where are you at, Brother Adam? 
Jeremiah, throw that up there, brother. Yes. The heart. Everybody say, my heart. My heart. Boy, now we don't believe that. There ain't a person in this house believes that. You don't believe that about you. You don't believe that. Only reason I believe it, Brother Jared, is in the Bible. But now when I'm thinking about it every day, I wonder, you know, well, I'm, just a pretty, I'm just a pretty good fella. That ain't me. I'm, I'm honest. That ain't me. You don't find out how honest folks are, the, the test of honesty. You watch them fill out their taxes. And they'll get a CPA to lie for them. Well, glory be to God. <laughs> now it'd be a good time for a message in tongues and interpretation. It'd probably say, Yea, I say unto thee, set thyself down and shut thy mouth up. Amen. Your heart's deceitful. Deceitful. Your heart is. That's why you've got to you've got to watch it. Amen. And what? Desperately wicked. They used to say in Kentucky a lot. I don't know if Brother Smith remembered this. They may not have done this over in Ohio County, but in Hopkins County, every once in a while they have these testimony service where somebody can get up and get their little handkerchief out. And he said, I want y'all to know if I know my heart. I love God with all of my heart. That's a problem. You don't know your heart. Well, hallelujah. You may think you know your heart, but the Bible said the heart is deceitful above all and desperately wicked, and who can know it? Only way you did it is, is where it's like this, where God comes in there and gets that white glove and goes down in and comes out. You thought you had it clean. You go in some lady's house and they looked just as clean as could be. But if you could look underneath that bed when they saw you coming in that closet, it looked like a cyclone hit it. Here they come and they're throwing everything. Don't open that door, praise God. Amen. Just pray. Who can know it? Hey, who knows it? He knows it. He knows it. That's why you need to spend time at the altar saying, God, search my heart. David said, search my heart. If you find any wicked way in me, take it out of me. You ask him, he'll find it. He'll find it. Man, you spend a lot of time in prayer. I ain't worried about talking in tongues. As much as I'm down there praying and say, God, you look, 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 look way down, look, 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 look down in there. Look down in there, and if you see anything there, see anything I need to make right. Maybe I had a feeling against Brother Sparlin, and, and, I, and I passed over it, you know. He smiled at me, and I smiled at him, and I thought, well, I, we got that taken care of. Better get down to pray, and, I, and I'm seeing old Brother Sparlin, and he's not, Smiling. And, 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 and something inside of me is telling me, you know, you never fix that. You never fix that. Might be like my, my father-in-law, he said years ago, is, there's a lady in church, and, and uh, uh, he's just a young man, and he didn't like her. And I don't exactly remember what had happened to bring the issue about. Sister Wanda probably remembers. But he went to this woman and apologized to her and said, I was wrong. She said, I know it. She said, and God brought you down. <laughs> he said, he won't knock her next week. <laughs> Here he is. He got through praying and crying and this old gal, you know, Everybody you go to may not be. Well, that's all right, brother, and we're just going to put it under the blood. And it's over, and it's all behind us. We're through, and hallelujah, we're shouting on the glory. Some folks make it hard for you to apologize. 
And there are some folks ain't never going to I don't know how they're going to go to heaven, but they ain't never going to apologize. Well, praise God. Man, I'm talking about keeping your heart with all diligence. Okay, where, where are you at, brother? Okay, brother. Uh, uh, let me, I'm going to wait and save you on the other. Uh, Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. In Genesis 6 and 5, and brother, Andy, I want you on Ephesians 6, 12, and then I want verse 16. Get ready to close one front up and open the other front up. Go ahead. What does it say? Yes. Yes. Hey. Everybody here is going to die. You going to die. You going to die. I know you can eat. Yeah, you can boil Brussels sprouts and drink the juice. You can cremate. You can cream carrots. We, we preached from my wife's uncle. They was written all the health stuff. We, and I'm not against that, okay? If, you've, if that helps you and you feel better, you do it. I'm not criticizing that. We stayed at this one fella's house, and he drank so much carrot juice, he was orange. <laughs> I believe if he, walked, if he went by the zoo, the rabbits would grab him and eat him up. <laughs> and when he sat down to eat, you never seen the light. He had a pile of stuff. He's eating, he's taking that. I don't know how he even tasted his food. He's eating, he's eating and taking all that stuff. And I said, do you do this every day? He said, oh, yes, I do this every day. And when he got a little older, he got down with Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's. And I was thinking to myself, he's in bad shape. I said, you know, a steak medium rare would have been pretty good. My God. At least you would have died and you had some fun. Amen, a triple dip, dip, dip of ice cream with some hot fudge on it and some uh, whipped cream and maybe a few nuts and cherries and things. That sounds like a health food to me. <laughs> Glory to God. Make you feel better anyhow. <laughs> Amen. I was, I, I was up here preaching for Brother Triplett years ago. And this guy stopped by and was uh, selling alfalfa pills. And he was telling Brother Triplett all about that alfalfa, what all it would do. And he just so happened to have some. You know how I remember one of them preachers come by. And he just happened to have some alfalfa. He had talked an hour about the how, you know, Brother Triplett, if you take these alfalfa pills, you'll probably live to be 120. He was talking to Brother Triplett, being kind. He sat there listening to him and when he got through, he said, how much of this do you want? He said, oh, I don't want none of it. He said, you don't? He said, no, I raise cows. That's all they eat, alfalfa. Ain't none of them little be a hunter. But he said, but you've, but you've convinced me. I believe this alfalfa is good for you. I'm going to let my cow eat the alfalfa, and I'm going to eat that cow medium rare. Praise God. So I'm just getting it second-handed. That guy really left... Uh, depressed, praise God. He didn't, he, he, he missed a sale, but I guarantee you, Brother Triplett enjoyed that steak medium rare a lot better than that. he would have enjoyed that alfalfa pill. But if you take it, that's good. I'm not criticizing you. You take it. Eat it right on, praise God. So I'm not making fun of you. I'm just, I'm just telling you that it ain't, I ain't going to do it. All right. <laughs> then also in the hearts of the Son of Man is full of evil. Man is, yes. Yes. That's your heart. You got a battle on that front, Brother Walker. Brother Walker, I'm telling everybody in this church, Brother Walker sitting right there in that seat. His heart's full of evil. Oh, Brother Murphy's heart's full of evil. There's preachers standing up here with these shoes seven and a half. Say amen. What do you expect from a midget? Praise the Lord.
heart full of evil. Well, praise the Lord. I got to grab that by the day. I don't want to pray. You think I'm going to come here an hour early and pray? I like to sit at office and if, if, if I'm real fond of coffee, drink, I've, I've been in preacher's office when they sit there and drink coffee all the time, the saints is praying. And uh, eating, eating a little cake, praise the Lord. But you know what I have to do? When I don't feel like praying, I grab my head. Okay, guy. To the altar you go. Well, praise the Lord. Can I confess to you? Watch him with the tape recorder sound. Can I confess to you? Every service I've ever been to in my life, I did not have the testimony of David where I was glad when they said unto me. There are times I didn't want to come. I was tired. I praise the Lord. I done heard it. I had stuff I wanted to do. Well, glory to God. But you know what it done? It got church time. I wasn't just shouting. Oh, I can't hardly comb my head for talking in tongues. No, I had to grab my here. Church night. You're going to church. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Because my heart's just like yours. And I'm battling that front. Okay, I got, well, I think I got maybe one more scripture on that, then we're moving to the next one. We got to hurry. I can't spend as long as the next one. Who, who's where? Who, who? Yes, get it? Yeah. I'm going to tell you what, first time somebody got a little honor around here, if God smoked them with cancer or, or broke both their legs, or made them blind, you couldn't pay folks to sin. But because folks sin and God don't kill them, well, I believe I'll try it again. Because work against sin, it's, it's fully set into the hearts of men. That's me and you and everybody else. If old Brady sins and gets by with it and he don't get caught, and God's good to him, and he comes in, he raises his hand, shed a tear or two. He feels the Lord. If he's not careful, when he goes out there the next day, he said, well, I got by with that. And I felt the Lord. So if I got a dime yesterday, I'm going to get 50 cents today. Because, But God don't settle his books every Friday. So... It gets in the heart of man. Well, I got by with that. I'm going to get away. You may got by. You ain't getting away. Because God's going to have a judgment day. It's because God ain't killed you because you sinned. That don't mean that you got away. That means God spared you where you could get right with him before you meet the judgment. All right. Where are you at, brother? Cotton? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. That's man's heart. That's, that's his front we're fighting here. But that's not the only battle we're fighting. Brother uh, Andy's got Ephesians 6 and 12, then verse 16. Brother Dallas... John 13 and 2, Brother Cotton, Acts 5 and 3, and Brother Adam, 1 Corinthians 7 and 5. I got to move these a little hurriedly. Well, can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. No, you can't I'll go to church on a Wednesday night to hear an old born Bible class, and, and I want to shout. You need to hear this. Make sure you know what you're shouting about. Well, praise God. And what does it say? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yes, we do. 
I didn't preach to y'all 40 minutes about flesh and blood you're wrestling in. Yes, we do. Well, praise the Lord. But that's not all that we're wrestling against. That's not the end of the story. I've known some folks that they don't even believe in the devil. They believe the only evil there is is in your flesh. Well, that's not so. That's not the only battle that you have. That's not the only battle that you got. Go ahead. Everybody say principalities. Yes. Say powers. Yes. Rulers of the darkness of this world. Now, what, what some, let me see if I can find that, what the margin of your Bible says. World rulers of this darkness against spiritual host are wicked spirits in heavenly places. I'm going to tell you, this battle's got more than one front. And, and you've got an enemy that you're wrestling with that's flesh. There is a real devil. And he can't read your thoughts, but I'm going to tell you what. He's been dealing with humanity ever since the Garden of Eden, and he knows we're all just alike. And, he, and, and just like your flesh, and you're fighting against that, you're battling on this way, and you're fighting over here, well, the devil's coming in over here. And he has evil spirits. And these evil spirits seize upon your weak spots. What does it say in verse 12, brother? And, yeah, what verse 16? Yes. Everybody say, above all. You got to take the shield of faith. I believe God. I believe I'm an overcomer. I believe I'm going to make it. I believe the blood of Jesus will help me. I believe in God's mercy. I believe in God's grace. I believe. That's what the shield of faith is. When the devil's telling you, you're not saved. You're not going to make it. You ain't got no right to praise the Lord. You just soon give in and quit. You're not going to make it. Your family's not going to make it. You got to take that shield of faith. And by taking that shield of faith, you will be able to do what? Switch all the fiery darts of the wicked. I got this from this 26 translations. Ignited darts, flaming darts, flaming missiles, fire-tipped arrows, and burning missiles. I mean that shield of faith because they're coming at you. You can't see them. But you got that shield of faith. They're after your mind. I'm here to tell you, I'm, I'm getting ready to prove it to you, the devil, not only your flesh, but besides having this war with your flesh, the devil has the power to put things in your mind. What does it say, Brother Dallas? And, okay, where are you at? Yes. All right. Now, 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 did, it, did, did Judas have this in his heart? No. Did Judas have this in his heart on his own? No. But I tell you what Judas did have. Judas had a, Judas wasn't honest. He was a thief. He was stealing out of the bag. And John said, said, why, Judas said, well, you ought to sold that and be given to the poor. And John records, not that he cared for the poor, but he was a thief. What are you stealing from God? What are you stealing from God? You want to wind up being a Judas? Well, you just steal from God that that belongs to God. He wasn't, when they was worshiping and grateful he was over there finding fault with them. You sit in church service after service and find fault with everybody that's worshiping. Well, I know that man. I heard he. I heard he had a temper, and 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 I heard this, and I heard that, and 
he's up there worshiping God, and, uh, and that's why I can't get my mind on God because I'm looking at him, and, and I ain't got no confidence in him. And, I, and that, that's how Judas was. And what Judas did, Judas opened his heart up. You want to keep the thief out of your heart, out of your home, lock the door. We go to bed at night, we lock the door. We got one of them security systems. We go to bed at night, I punch that security code in. Well, praise God. You know why? I don't want them in here. You, we, I know we lived in a day where we didn't lock the doors and everything. Well, we don't live there anymore, I guess you know that. I mean, they'll steal your trailer and your truck right out of the right out of your yard. You're just going to leave your keys in your car. They'll drive it right off. Praise the Lord. You ain't living in 1950. You're living in 2018. Well, glory to God. And if you leave, if you leave all your stuff open, thief's going to steal it. Judas left his heart open. He did not keep his heart with all diligence. He let the flesh win the battle. And when you let the flesh win the battle, this is what happens to you. Supper being in the, the devil, having put it into the heart of Judas to betray him. Brother Smith, he wasn't thinking about that. He wasn't thinking, that wasn't a natural thought that he had. But he left his heart open with so much other kind of stuff that the devil said, well, since he's got the door open, I'm going to put that in his heart. Well, glory to God. Amen. So the devil can put stuff in your heart. Well, let's, let's get another passage. Where are you at? Who, who are you got? Acts 5 and 3. This is talking about Ananias and Sapphira. Peter said, yes. Yes. Why has Satan filled thine heart? Now, stealing's one of the works of the flesh. Devil don't have to tell you to steal. Stealing's part of the works of the flesh. But when you're going to steal, then you're going to lie to God. Lord, she's quiet. I mean, they'd been, you know what? And they were stealing what belonged to them. It wasn't a command to do what they was doing. There's no command in Acts 2 for everybody to sell all they had. There's no command there. But something just overwhelmed them. And I believe it was God's plan because in Acts 8, the church is going to be scattered and God didn't want them to have a house to go home to. He wanted to spread the gospel throughout, throughout that part of the world. And the only way he could do that is they had to let everything go. So there wasn't a command. But old Ananias and Sapphira wanted credit for doing that that they did not do. And, and Peter talks to him. We're not going to go into all that. He said, don't you know why you had that? It was your own. You could do whatever you wanted to do with it. But instead, you come in here and lie to God. Why did they lie to God? Why has Satan filled thine heart? Right. You got to watch out leaving that door open. I'm going to tell you what. You let the devil come on the porch. He'll be in your recliner. He'll be sleeping in your bed. He'll take over the house. You ever had any company visit you that, you that they thought the house was there? Before you know it, they'll sit in your chair, they'll eat in your groceries. You know they're never going to leave. Said, hey, well, praise God. And then you're trying to figure out how to get rid of How do I get rid of them? Well, you don't need to open the door for this guy because he'll take advantage of it. What else do we have? 1 Corinthians 7 and 5. Yes. 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 This is talking about marriage. You don't send the husband and wife to the couch. 
You don't get mad and lock them out of the bedroom. Now praise the Lord. You don't get so spiritual. If you're too spiritual to uh, fulfill your marital duties, you're too spiritual. You need to come off of that and be a little carnal. Well, praise God. That's what this verse is saying. Amen. Go ahead. Go ahead. Where are you at? Read. <laughs> Lord, I've worked the man over. He can't hardly stutter and praise God. Things will be better at home. Glory to God. What does it say? That you may, you know, look, if, 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 you, if you're going to be apart, the only reason you got a right to be apart is for fasting and prayer. Not because you're mad. Or you're spiteful. Well, glory to God. But for fasting and prayer. And then what? Yes. And, and, and that's with consent. Glory to God. What, what does it say? In continuity. I didn't even say it right. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Incontinency. Because you have that in your flesh. Hear me? You have that in your flesh. And if you don't take care of that, then the devil feeds that. Well, glory to, God. glory to God. Amen. No, I'm not going to say it. Well, praise the Lord. A lot of times if folks would do better at home, folks wouldn't be hunting somewhere else. Can you say praise the Lord? And I could read some scriptures about it, but I'd embarrass you. But it's right there in your, in your black back Bible. Amen. Well, glory to God. Because you don't want to leave yourself open to sexual temptation because you're not being right toward each other in marriage. Well, praise the Lord. Some folks are always too tired or they got a headache or they don't feel good or... Or or, 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 or or something of that nature, then they wonder why their husband and wife's all flirting somewhere. You need to take care of business at home. If you don't take care of business at home, the devil's going to seize on that. Well, that's what this passage is saying here. The devil will seize on that. Then you'll have all kinds of troubles. Well, can you say praise the Lord? Well, so you got more than one front. You got this flesh that you got to fight with. Then you got the spirit world here. And they're going to gang up on you. And I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to tell you what John said. Greater is he that is in you. John 4 and 4. Than he that is. I'm telling you. Acts 1 and 8 said you shall receive power. That's power over the flesh. That's power over the devil. That's power over the world. You can live an overcoming life. It's going to be a fight from the time you go to the altar till you go to heaven. But I'm going to tell you, you're more than conquerors through him that loved you. You're not a victim, you are a victor. God wants you to live an overcoming life. He wants you to live an overcoming life. And to do that, you've got to recognize your enemies. You've got two of them. You've got you and you've got this spirit. I'm going to take, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this shield of faith. And said, said you'd be able to quench how many? Oh. I'm taking my shield of faith. I'm not. I can't get rid of all this that's in here. That's a daily crucifixion. But I, he's gave me a shield to take care of all that that's out there. I want to pick up my shield and use it. How about you? 
Why don't you raise your hand and ask the Lord to help you. Help us, God. Help us in this struggle. Help us in this fight. We know who our enemy is. Lord, someone said, I've met the enemy, and the enemy is me. Oh, God, I want to overcome my flesh. I don't want, I want, I don't want to be influenced by the devil and the evil spirits. I want to be a victor, God. And I know you gave me power through the Holy Ghost and the Word of God and the blood and the name of Jesus and angels. Lord, I know you're on our side and we can win. In Jesus' name. Well, I didn't teach Sunday morning. I didn't preach Sunday night. So I filled your basket up tonight. Now, Brother Anthony wasn't here to shout and fall out on the floor Sunday morning. So, <laughs> so all he got was this part tonight.